this is just a little thought for you. You know, I'm, I'm a person that believes in positive thinking and positive faith. Positive, positive, positive. I believe in that. Amen. Uh, because uh, God's a positive God, the devil's a <coughs> negative devil. That's just the way it is. Positive thinking is, uh, especially if it's in line with the Word, and not just uh, positive self-thinking, but positive thinking in line with the Word. It is, uh, uh, the Bible says, that as a man thinketh, so is he. See? So if you think negative, then you're going to be negative. And if you think worry and fear and doubt, then that's what you're going to have. You're just going to have what you think. That's what the, the devil wants to keep us focused on the negative because the devil's a negative devil. Amen. Amen. He wants you to worry about all those bad things that he's, that's not even going to happen tomorrow. He, he wants you to, well, what if this and what if that and what if the other? <coughs> and then they don't even happen. And look at all that energy you wasted. You could have been praising the Lord and thinking positive. You know? Seriously. The devil wants you thinking on the negative. But we're going to think on the word. We're going to think on the promises. See, you can think on the problem or you can think on the promise. The problem is real sometimes, isn't it? Well, many times it's not even real. Many times the problem is not even real. The devil just has you worried about a problem that ain't even there. But sometimes the problem is real. But even when it's real, are you listening to me? Even when the problem is real, God doesn't want us to focus on the problem. He wants us to focus on the promise. Amen. The promise is your way out. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't focus on, on the, the junk you're in. You don't focus on the quicksand when you're in the quicksand, do you? No, you focus on something that you can grab to pull you out. Amen. Something that you can grab a hold of. Something that you can reach for to pull you out. If you focus on the quicksand, you're going to drown. You've got to focus on the, on the promise. Focus on the solution. <laughs> and then focus on the way out. And so today I want to talk to you about focusing on, focusing on the abundant life that Jesus has given to us. I want you to focus on the tree of life. See, they were in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. And last night I went to bed, and again, this happens to me. But anyway, I went to, I went to bed, uh, you know, and I had kind of went over my sermon that I wanted to do for you today about the devil in the garden. And we'll still touch a little bit on the devil in the Garden of Eden and all that. But the Lord just kept showing me the life, the tree of life, and and he and he was showing me that if Adam and Eve had concentrated on the tree of life, there was only one tree they weren't supposed to eat, just one. Holy schmoly, people, just one tree, and they could eat from all these other trees, and they could have ate from the tree of life, and they didn't eat. They did not eat from the tree of life. And that's the one thing they should have ate from. And Jesus always was the tree of life. Amen. He's the tree of life. Jesus is. And Jesus said, I have the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. He is the tree of life. And we've eaten from him and we had communion this morning. Those of you that partook of communion, we took partook of the tree of life. That's Jesus. We partook of him. But we're going to look this morning about our focus. Uh, before we do that, I want to give you a powerful thought in line with positive thinking. A positive attitude may not solve all your problems. But it will annoy enough people to make it worth the effort. Amen. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I do that to my family sometimes because of my positive thinking and positive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Of course, that's supposed to be a joke. But anyway, uh, as I get older, I think my jokes get worse. 
But let's, uh, let's pray. Father, I pray for this word. This word seal. Settle down and way down deep in our spirit. Settle way down and deep in our spirit today. Hallelujah in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let us, let us walk away from here with a different focus than we had when we came in, Lord, just with a focus on you. And a focus on the tree of life and the good things that you have for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Open your Bibles for just a second, and it's not in, in any of those scriptures I have back there, Daniel. But in John chapter 10... Verse 10, and uh, this is a well-known verse to us, but I think it is a pivotal verse. The thief cometh not but for to steal. Who's the thief? And to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have, what's the word? Life. Life. That's what I want to focus on. The devil wants you and I to focus on steal what has been stolen from us, those that have, uh, lives have been taken, and things that have been destroyed. He wants you to focus on your past. He wants you to focus on your abuse. He wants you to focus on the things that have gotten you down, the people that have hurt you, the ways that have hurt you. He wants you to focus on the times you've been disappointed, the times you've been betrayed, the times that you've ha uh, uh, not gotten what you wanted, the times that the refrigerator broke, the times that uh, I mean, people, people call me. People call me on the telephone. Bless the Lord. They call me on the phone. Pastor, can't pray for me. The devil, the devil is after me. The devil uh, made my battery go out of my car. The devil is, and I said, no, it didn't. Your battery will wear down after a certain amount of time. You don't even need the devil for your battery to go out of your car. Don't focus on it. Just go ahead and praise the Lord for a new battery. Amen. I'll praise the Lord with you for a new battery. Let's just thank him right now for a new battery. Don't give the devil so much credit. He didn't mess up your battery or your refrigerator. Did you know refrigerators just go out? Things just happen to, uh, to things that we have. And in it, it's just life. Don't give the devil so much credit. <laughs> just thank the Lord that, the, and that God said, I'll provide all your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19. He said, I'm going to supply it. Well, thank you, Lord, for the new battery. Thank you, Lord, for the new part for the refrigerator. Thank you, Lord, for the rent money. Thank you, Lord, for... Yeah, instead of woe is me, woe is me, woe is me, wine, 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 where, where, where. You can do it. Amen. We, we could be a whiner or we could be a winner. I'm going to be a winner. Lord, be yeah. God. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Winner. So let's, let's turn our focus off of the whining and put our focus on the winner. And Jesus is the winner. And we are conquerors and winners through him. Amen. So, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life. That they might have it more abundantly. In the Greek, this word, abundantly, more abundantly, means in super abundance. Amen. In super abundance. Oh, hallelujah. God wants you to have life, and he wants you to have it in super abundance. And if you don't have it, then you're focusing too much on the enemy and what he's doing, or yielding to him, or giving in to him. Quit yielding to him, quit giving in to him, and quit giving him credit. Because the, if you give in to him, if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. You know how the devil gets in your house to steal, kill, and destroy? You let it in. That's right. The devil will not come into your house to steal, kill, and destroy if you don't let him in. Amen. He cannot cross the bloodline of your house unless you open the door and say, Well, come on in. Amen. We've got to keep that door shut on him. Keep the door shut. How do you keep the door shut? Keep focused on Jesus. Keep focused on Jesus. Keep focused on Jesus. Keep focused on Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the tree of life for us. 
In John 14, where since you're already in the book of John, we'll flip over to John 14, and we'll look at verse 6 for just a minute. And uh, this is a wonderful passage, and of course I, I read from this often in funerals, uh, and starting in verse 1, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to look uh, at verse 6. Because Jesus said these words to Thomas. He said, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Well, how do I get out of this problem? Turn to Jesus. He's the way out. Amen. Are you listening? <clears throat> He's the way to your next job. He's the way to your next need met. He's the way to your next healing. He's the way to the right relationship. He's the way to get along with your wife. Amen. Well, I just can't get along with my wife. Well, he'll show you the way. Of course, I always tell you 1 Corinthians 14, or 13, 4 to 8 is the way. Because God is love and Jesus is love. And he said these things, so, you know, if you love one another, that you're patient and kind and, uh, and all and so on and so forth. Read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. No person that reads, I'll say this just real quick. No person, no couple, I won't say no person, no couple that both read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8 and do it will ever be in a divorce court. Amen. Never. Never. No. Two people that read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8 and do it will ever be in a divorce court. Because it says that if you're loving in that way, but it takes two. Did you know that it takes two to tango? Yeah. Just one of you. I wish I could say if just one person did that. But uh, one person can ruin a marriage. Amen. One person can be trying to, and doing, doing their very best at uh, walking in the love of God, and the other one doesn't, and it doesn't work. Amen. And two, two friends, if one friend does the love walk and the other friend doesn't, it can ruin the friendship. Amen. All right? So make sure you choose friends that are committed to Jesus and his wife and his love walk. If you don't have, if, you have, if the friends you have are not committed to the love walk, they're not going to do nothing to protect from you. Amen. Because <laughs> love is giving. See, <laughs> selfishness says, "Give me, give me." As it says in what I'm in, in the movie, "What about Bob?" <laughs> give me, I need, I need. I love that movie. Give me, give me, I need, I need. What you need is to stop thinking about you so much. Amen. And start giving. Amen. Looking how you can bless somebody else. Amen. Sometimes when we give out, that's when we get our greatest blessings. Help me. So he said, I am the way. And then he says, I'm the truth. And I am the life. Amen. See, Jesus is the tree of life. In the Garden of Eden, Jesus was the tree of life. Now, I don't know if he stood there as the Son of God or if he stood there as a tree. I don't know how he stood there, but there is something in me that knows that Jesus was the tree of life. Amen. Amen. Jesus was the burning bush. <laughs> Amen. Because the birth, the the, the Bible says that the bush that Moses called the bush the Lord. And, and, and he says, I am that I am have sent thee. The, the bush said. <laughs> the bush said, I am that I am. I'd like to have the bush talk to me one day. <laughs> he said, I am that I am. And then Jesus told them when they came to, the men came to get him to take him away to the cross. He said, Art thou the Son of God? Are you Jesus the Christ? He said, I am. And they all fell backwards, slamming the spear on the ground. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I am. See, he's the great I am. In the embodiment of Jesus, glory to God. Woo. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the tree of life. Keep your focus on the tree of life. Keep your focus on, if you're sick in your body, keep your focus on the tree of life, on the healing. Don't keep your focus on your sickness. Don't wag and talk and gripe and complain and focus on your sickness day and night, morning, afternoon, and evening. Do you have aches and pains? You may. But, and, and we do. I mean, we're in a human body. But you know what? Don't focus on it. Focus on the healing. Amen. If you've got a problem, focus on the problem. Instead of the problem. Amen. Glory to God. I'm telling you. If you, if you have a need. And, and you don't have the money for something. You can focus on the lack. Or you can fo focus on the provision. Jesus is the provider. Amen. Well. Just begin to thank him. My God shall supply all my needs. According to his riches and glory. I need a car. Thank you Lord for my new car. Thank you Lord for my new car. Thank you, Lord, for my new car. Uh, that's how I got Nancy. No, uh, no I went for a car. <laughs> but it, 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 I learned a principle. Now, if there's ever something I need, I praise the Lord until he gets so tired of hearing that praise, or so glad about it, that he gives me what I want. Amen. Amen. And what you do, and that's what I did with Nancy. I went to Bible college every morning, drove down 71st Kenosha Street <coughs> from Memorial Drive all the way down to Elm Street, towards Elm, oh, right at Elm Street in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. It was just at six and a half miles. But it was seven because I was just up Memorial just a little bit. So by the time we cut it off, it was right at seven miles to Rayma. And every morning, I got in my car. And I drove, I, I put that 1977 Cutlass in gear, red with a white roof, Woo. glory be to God. Yeah. And I put my 8-track Jesus music in, <laughs> amen, Phil Cakey and Keith Green and all the Christian artists from back in that day. And I would just listen to the uh, singing praises, but, all, but on the way, every day to school, every day, every day. Every day, every day, I'd say, thank you, Jesus, for my wife. I didn't even know. I had no idea who my wife was, but I wanted one. I decided I wanted a wife. I didn't want a girlfriend. I didn't want to sleep in. I didn't want to sleep over. I wanted a wife. Amen. That's what I wanted, a wife. And uh, uh, so, every, I, thank you, Lord Jesus, for my wife. Thank you that you're bringing her to me. Thank you, Lord. She's blonde hair, blue eyes, <laughs> plays the piano, and sings out. Though. And I drove. That's all I prayed. Nothing else. And I did get a lot more than that. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And But I, I'm driving every morning. Every morning. Every morning. Every morning. And so I dated this little redhead girl uh, at Rayma. <laughs> And uh, after I, we went out on a date, and went, we went to church, and we went out to eat afterwards, and we went home. And uh, I got home and called Nancy. And I said, and Nancy lived here in Missouri. She was going to see my wife. I didn't know she was supposed to be my wife. You know, the Lord had told her a year before that that I was going to be my husband. And he did not tell me. He told her, but she didn't tell, and she didn't tell me, and he didn't tell me either. And so, but we were friends. We were really best friends. We used to clean our church together, and we did things together. So I said, Nancy, I said, uh, I'm out to, out to this uh, girl tonight, this red-headed girl. She said, well, how was your date? I said, she's boring. I don't like her. She's boring. She's not fun like you. Uh, <laughs> And I, like I said, I didn't know she was going to be my wife. The Lord had not spoken to me. Because I always claimed that God would show me who my wife was. 
I was playing. He'd show me who my wife was, and I didn't have to date around all these people, sleep around, and do all that kind of junk that people do. I didn't want to do all that stuff. And so, long story short, uh, school was out in May. So, February the 14th, at midnight, 1981, the Lord spoke to me right about before midnight that Nancy was going to be my wife. Well, I called her on the phone at midnight, February 14, 1981. And I said, we talked a while. We hem hawed around, and I did. This is how this is how the proposal went. I said, uh, Nancy, um, I, you know, I, I feel called into ministry. I don't know exactly what kind or anything like that. And I said, but uh, you know, I don't really want to be in ministry alone. <laughs> and I said, uh, somehow I see you in all that. Amen. And she said. I talked to our elders of our church last year, and I told them that I was supposed to marry you, and the Lord had told me that you were going to be my husband. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, that was how I proposed to her. Well, I sat my phone down. Back then, you know, my phone bill was $200 a month, because we don't have cell phones and all that back in that day, you know. It was ridiculous, you know, the AT&T bill. And all that. And so I set my phone down, and I proceeded to dance all around my living room and shout and speak your tongues. I was so excited. And I came back, and I said, so does that mean you're going to marry me? Yes. Well, that was February 14th. We got married June the 6th on my, my mother's birthday. We got married my mother's birthday, 1981. Well, how did I get my wife? Well, I had a focus. But my focus wasn't on a bunch of women. I mean, there were some pretty girls down there, right? I mean, there was 2,000 students down there. There was a bunch of pretty girls down there. Really pretty girls. But I'm telling you, I got the best deal. Because you know why? Because I got it from God. I kept praying and praying and praying. And every, and, and then, but see, now, I didn't pray, though. I didn't say, oh, dear God, somehow bring me a wife. Oh, I'm just a hoping and a praying somehow you'll bring me a wife. No, I said, Lord, I thank you for my wife. I thank you for bringing her to me. I thank you that she's blonde-haired, blue-eyed, plays the piano, and sings alto. Guess what? Nancy was blonde-haired, blue-eyed, played the piano, and sang alto. Amen. Praise God. Got everything you want. And I married my best friend. I didn't even know. Isn't God good? But, but focus. When you go to pray about something, don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you want. When we bought that house in Elmo, you know, several years ago, the one on the corner of uh, 4th Street East and Cherry, 622 4th Street East. You all, some of you, how many of y'all know where, where my house is? Well, or was, as I saw it. We bought that, and Melissa, back in the day, we were living out in the uh, Cloverdale, out here on the other side of school. And the Lord just put it in my heart that we needed a house with an apartment. So I got in my car, and this is my custom. I get in my car, and I drive, and I pray in tongues. I was praying the Spirit. So I connect my spirit with God, and I just pray. And I, Lord, I thank you for a house. I thank you that your angels are taking me to the perfect house. I thank you the house that I need that has the apartment in it is uh, that you're taking me and you're showing me that house in Jesus' name. And I'd look through the papers, and I'd look here, and I'd look there. And finally, I just said, you know, I'm going to do it my old-fashioned way. I'm getting in my car, and I'm driving around. And I said, Lord, thank you for my house. Thank you for the house that I need that has an apartment in it. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. The angels are leading me to that house. And I came across that house. And there was a little, real shabby, nasty little for sale sign that somebody just threw together, stuck in the ground on a stick. 
in this at this at my house up there. And I uh, <clears throat> and I said, Well, look at that house. And I looked up and I said, That's an awful big upstairs. And I looked at the side, there's a separate entrance. I went and knocked on the door, talked to Mr. Stevens. I think his name is Randy Stevens. And I said, Mr. Stevens, I said, uh, I said, your house is for sale. He said, yeah. Uh, yeah. I said, well, how long you had that house for sale? Oh, just a few hours. <laughs> I stuck the sign in the yard. I said, well, I've been praying for a house like this. I said, it looks like you might have an apartment. I said, yes, sir, I do. I said, you reckon I could see the upstairs? Yeah. Let me get my son to get up and put his clothes on and he come up and look. So I came back an hour later and went and saw the apartment upstairs. Well, went back and saw him a couple days later. I said, I want the house. And uh, Lord, I told the Lord, I said, now Lord, I want this house for the perfect price. Well, I had so much money. Back then we had some money left over from our inheritance years ago. We don't have any left now, but we did then. And uh, I said, Lord, I need this for such and such a price. Well, he said, uh, I'll sell it to you for 56000 Now, it was appraised for fifty-eight six six years ago. Well, I knew it was worth more than that. I was born yesterday. I've seen enough houses. And uh, so we made the offer and paid him cash for the house. Except I paid him 2000 more than he asked for. I said, well, it's worth more than $56,000. i will give you 58000 I didn't, my spirit wouldn't let me pay him 56 because that wasn't really fair it just wasn't fair to him in my heart it just didn't feel it. I knew it was worth more than that so I'm at least giving him the appraisal price <laughs> hallelujah amen well you know we just sold it last year for 111 and bought this house over here that we're in, and we're ahead. We're ahead. Now, why is that? Because you drive around and pray in the Spirit. Amen. You drive around and talk to Jesus. You drive around and talk to Him, and you say, Lord, you lead me. I don't want to do this from my head. See, if you do it from your head and not your spirit, then you're going to be worse shape the next house you move into instead of better. You don't want to be in worse shape. You want me in better shape. <laughs> Are you listening to me? I, how come he to get off on a thing like this? I'm trying to show you that you let the Lord lead you. You keep your focus on what you want. You claim what you want. Did you ever read Mark? Chapter is not even in my notes. Mark 11, 23. Why do you always go to Mark 11, 23? Because you ain't learned it yet, that's why. <laughs> and Jesus, verse 22, answered and said, then, then have faith in God. Have faith in God. <laughs> For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou renewed, and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things that he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Well, I just believed that I would have whatever I saith. Amen. So that's why I said blonde hair, blue eyes, yeah, yeah, yeah. alto, and yeah. like him. I believed what I said I would have, and I got what I said. And I believed I would find an apartment for the right price, a house with an apartment. And I prayed, Lord, I thank you. Did you notice I didn't beg him? Amen. Did you notice I didn't beg him? Are you listening to me? I received it by faith. Now watch this. Watch this in verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire. You desire something today by desiring something? Or your desire is what you're focusing. That's your focus. Don't focus on the thing that's hindering your desire. Focus on the desire. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray. When you pray... Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. 
Do you know what the New International Version says and the Greek says? Believe that you already have them and they'll be yours. Amen. Believe that you already have them. Well, the doctor told me I have cancer. Well, believe that you receive healing. I believe that I receive healing now. Well, the healing hadn't come yet. Don't matter. Just thank him anyway. Amen. Thank him anyway as if it had come. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just thank him anyway. Thank him anyway. Well, what if it don't come? Well, then you get to go be with Jesus, and that's all right, too. Hallelujah. <laughs> but we're, gonna, we're not living as if it didn't come, and what if it doesn't come? If it doesn't come, we go be with the Lord. But you know what? I'm seeing an awful lot of you being healed of things. I'm seeing an awful lot of faith, and an awful lot of positive faith happening in this church. Hallelujah. We've got more miracles in this church than we do... Uh, failures. God's just given us miracle after miracle. And really, we don't have any failures because those that went to heaven, how much of a failure is going to heaven? Amen. Mm, hallelujah. It's not a failure to go to heaven. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I want to go there. Amen. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. For this, I'm telling you that whatever things you ask for, Believe and trust and confident that it is granted to you. It is. Now, it's going to be. No, it is. It is. It is. It is. If I could ever teach you, if you could ever learn, I'll receive it. I'll receive it now. I'll take it now. It's mine. I'll take it now. It's mine. It's mine. i take it now. That's the promise. That's learning to focus on the thing. Let's look at where... Uh, in 2 Corinthians 4.18, the Apostle Paul talks in 2 Corinthians 4.18 about this focus. About this focus. And I'm going to teach you a Greek word today. What time is it? Hallelujah. I get so excited telling stories and telling what Jesus does. Glory to God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.18 Now, when you're going through something, when you're going through something, look at verse 17 first. When you're going through something, especially when you're going through something hard. Are you listening to me, Alicia? When you're going through something hard. Amen. That's when you're really, really going to focus. Amen. Because the devil wants to get you off in the problem. He wants to get you off to focusing on the problem. And, it, and, and Paul said, for our light affliction, that means we're going through something. Amen. Which is for a moment. What's that tell us? Hang on. It ain't going to last. Okay? So that's a word for you. That's a word for all of us. This light affliction is just for a moment. It's not going to last. Hang in there. Amen. Hang in there. This light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh a far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. When we're going through something, but we stay focused. We stay focused because God's going to give us the glory. The glory is coming. The Bible says that Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Amen. And the joy that was set before him was this going to be in my family. Hallelujah, day is going to be in my family. Bless the Lord. He looked way off down the ages and he saw us. Born again, his own children. And he said, because of them, that's the joy set before me. I'm going to still have endured this cross. Because glory be to God, I'm going to have, I'm going to have those people that have Father's Arms Fellowship. And I'm going to have every child of God that's ever been saved. They're all going to be in my family. So for the joy set before me, I'm going to keep my focus. And Jesus went to that cross. If he had not focused on us and what he was supposed to do, he'd have given up. Because he was tempted to. Jesus was tempted to not carry the cross. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane? He said, Father, if you can let this cup pass from me, let it pass from me. If I can get out of this, Lord, let me out of this. But not my will, but thine be done. Amen. And he kept his focus. 
and kept his focus. And when you're going through something really hard, keep your focus. So, he says, while we look, while we, while we were going through these afflictions, you're going through a hard time. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I want to teach you a word. And the word for look, while we look, say look. look. This word look is the Greek word skopio. S-K-O-P-E-O. -E Have any of y'all, yeah, anybody ever uh, shot a gun? And, and uh, when you're shooting a rifle, hey, when you're shooting a rifle, there, what's this little thing up here? It's a scope. You look down the scope, and that's your aim. And what do you do? You look right at what you're aiming to shoot at. Scopio. While we focus, our gaze on the thing that God has for us. That means to focus. Scopio. You look not at the things which are seen. He said, don't look at the things that are seen. Well, what's seen? Well, your bank account ain't enough. Your body hurts. The doctor said this. I'm struggling with struggling with alcohol this week. Want to drink. Struggling with some kind of drug or something. Want to do something. To comfort myself because I've had something bad happen to me and I'm going, I want to go back to that comfort zone that I'm used to. See? Scopio. Don't look at that. Don't look at that stuff. While we look not at the things that are seen. Don't look at that junk around you. Look at Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your focus on him. Keep your focus on the promise. Keep your focus on the provision. He's our savior. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. We're going to keep our focus on him. And it says while we look not at the things which are seen, but we look at the things which are not seen. What's not seen? Your healing isn't seen sometimes. The money that you need is sometimes not seen. Hallelujah. I needed $500 a couple weeks ago for a situation that the Lord had put in front of me and I did not have it. I needed $500. I did not have it. But I thanked the Lord for it. I just began to thank the Lord. I said, Lord, I, and I wish I could tell you that I needed it for, well, maybe I'm glad I can tell you that I didn't need it for me. I needed it for somebody else. Most of my praying is believing money in for somebody else, and I believe it in pretty good. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And when it doesn't come, the Lord tells me I'm not. I, that's because I'm not. I want to help in a different way. Amen. Sometimes God wants to help. He wants you to do your own seeking of the Lord. Sometimes He'll let me get it for you, but really, initially, and eventually. We all need to learn to get things by faith for ourselves. Amen. Are you listening to me? That's faith. Then say for what sort of things you desire. Pastor Ken will believe and receive them for you. It says you'll believe and receive them. Amen? Amen. So I believe the Lord. And out of the clear blue sky, wasn't expecting it, somebody sent me a check for $600. I said, well, Lord, be to God. I might keep a hundred of this for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I wasn't ex A pastor, a pastor and his wife that lived 1,500 miles from here, and I haven't seen him for three years, just got a... The Lord told us to send you this $600. And I, I emailed it back, and I said... I'm sure he did. Thank you so much. And I told him what I was believing for and what I was doing with him. 
Hallelujah. Now see, you need to do that. Amen. You need to learn to do that. Yeah. If all of you was doing using your faith like I do on stuff like that, we didn't have so much money in this church, we wouldn't know what to do with it all. Yeah. We're going to do it, aren't we? Daniel says we're going to do it. God. Why? So we can be blessed. So much that we can bless others. Amen. Good measure. Pressed in. Shaken together. Running over. In Genesis 2, 8 and 9. Let me look at my clock. Genesis 2, 8 and 9. Oh, run out of time. Uh, Genesis, you know, that's the first one. Genesis 2, 8 and 9. <laughs> Come on, Missy Genesis. And the Lord God planted the garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to sight and good for food. The tree of also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not what God wants us interested in. He doesn't want you focusing on good and evil and knowledge. A lot of smart people in this world that are fools. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. There's a lot of smart people in this world that are fools. Amen. Because they have knowledge, but they don't have life. And I want that eternal life on the inside of me. I want Jesus living big on the inside of me. I want healing big on and deliverance big on the inside of me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And then it says that there was a tree of life. Where's the tree of life, Missy? Can you get me to that verse? Because I'm lost. Awesome. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is in, in the sight and good for food. The tree of life also. In the midst. It was right there in that verse. The tree of life also. See, there's a prime example. I didn't see the tree of life. I saw the knowledge of good and evil. Didn't even know that was in that verse. That's a perfect example, but I'm telling you that we do. We look at knowledge. We look at life. The things that are going on around us. And we miss the tree of life. And God wants us focusing on the tree of life. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. life. He's the tree of life. What are we going to eat of? Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. What are we going to eat of? Jesus. Jesus, the tree of life. And in closing, Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. There's so much more that I want to say. Hebrews 11, 1 says that, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The not th seen things are the things that we need to focus on. Revelation 2, 7, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. That tree of life is what we need to take hold of. Hallelujah. Oh, Rohoshtah said. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter into the gates of that city. There was a tree of life in the very beginning in Genesis. That tree of life is going to be in the paradise of God. And we're going to get to eat it. Adam and Eve didn't get to eat it. Because they listened to the serpent. And they got their focus off. But those of us who overcome and keep our eyes on Jesus. When we get into the paradise of God in the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. We're going to eat of the tree of life. That Adam and Eve missed out on. How many is going to eat of that tree? With me? That tree is Jesus. We're going to eat from him who has abundant life for us. Super abundant life. That's what we
we did. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Stand with me just for a second. We're going to close now. Everybody be very reverent for just a minute. Be very reverent. Istama rojo se te de te she te he. Hash te he de koho It's time for a change, says the Spirit of God. It's time for a change in your heart. It's time for a change in your focus. Or if you would seek the kingdom of God first, these other things that have plagued your mind and distressed you will no longer have a hold on you. Make that change today. Turn unto me and follow me. For Hosinia, Rashtenea, Ba Subodiete Kan, Brando Groste Nene de Venkan, or I will lead you unto a path of life. And you shall see that that which has been a deserted, dead area in your life will spring forth with new life. <coughs> as you eat the tree of life. Jesus. For I have better for you. And yes, some of you are going to be attacked with great attack in this next season. But it will not affect you because your scope shall be upon me. And you shall come out as pure gold, and you shall be stronger than ever, says the Lord. For I will bring you through the trial, and I will bring you through the test, and there will be an angel set on your side, and you'll see that he'll protect you. Now, not only will he protect you, but he'll bring provision in darkest hour. For I am with you, and you are my people, and I am your God. Do not, do not, do not turn and focus on other things. For if you do, there shall be destruction. But if you will keep your eyes on me, there shall be life says the Spirit of God. For my people are a people of abundant life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we just praise you, Jesus. We give you glory and honor.